All right, all right. Erase the chalk, episode 14. I'm Dan. I'm Charles. Oh, Charles, we got a great guest today. We got a why don't, we got, uh, why don't you go ahead and uh set it off there? Man, uh I met this guy uh last summer. Uh he he blessed me with his uh participation. We had an open run session up in Wakefield, you know, uh, and I, I met him and uh you know we we chatted for a little while. Um and I saw him on the court and you know he's a beast. <laughs> he, he's really good. Uh, you know, without further ado, man, Ryan Marcus, how are you, bro? I'm good. Appreciate you guys having me. Hey, no, we appreciate having you. So, uh, I guess pretty much to start it off, you know, you want to uh, you want to want to run a little bit by us, uh, you know, where you're from, and uh, you know, position wise, and and where you're going to school. Just let everybody know. So originally from Wakefield, Mass. Um, Went to Wakefield Public Schools my whole life. I uh, went to Wakefield High School for four years. Um, that's where I really got into basketball big time. Uh, right starting in high school, that's when I kind of developed into my game today. Uh, so I play shooting guard now, but in high school, I played a little bit of everything. Um, so basically, graduated from high school, and I decided to come to UMass Amherst. Um, I got lucky enough with a spot on the team as a preferred walk-on. Um, and ever since, just been working every day, just trying to do whatever we can for the team. It's awesome. That's the grind, bro. Uh, you know, let's get right into it, man. Uh, you know, we're going to we're gonna go all over the place with these questions. But, you know, I want to start off, you know, 2020, man. Uh, you know, as we all know, it was a, you know, pretty strange, weird, you know, time for the, for the whole world. Right. Uh, you know, go into a little bit, uh, you know, what did you learn from 2020 um, about yourself or just the world in general? Um, I feel like for myself, you try to control the things that you can control. My coach would always say that every day after practice and stuff, control the things you can control and everything else out of your hands. You can't do anything about that. So as long as you do whatever you can every single day, then that's all you can actually handle. Because with us, we'd have practice and stuff. And for all we know, if we got one positive COVID test, that's the end of it for two weeks. Shut down mm -hmm. for two weeks. All that hard work just goes out for nothing. So that's pretty much it. Just making sure that you do everything you can that's in your own hands. And that's kind of what I got to keep on taking into uh, past 2020. Yeah. And, you know, you know, it's, it's weird. It seemed like it started off, you know, unfortunately with, you know, with Kobe, uh, you know, leaving us um, and Gigi and everybody else on, on that horrific day. Uh, you know, if so, if you can explain what did, what did Kobe mean to you? Or, you know, when, when someone mentions Mamba mentality, what does that, what does that mean to you? So as a Celtics fan, <laughs> you know, you know, not, not really a huge Kobe fan when he was playing, but, once you see when he retired, um, you kind of see all the mutual respect everybody had for him. Um, it's kind of just like you lost, even when Kobe died, like I feel like you lost somebody you knew, even though you never met him. Um, we were actually at basketball practice when we found out and just like, we just sat there in silence for like five minutes. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of just like, you have to keep on, you have to use like Kobe's, kind of mom mentality, like you say, um, I feel like everybody has to kind of take that. Everyone who plays basketball today has to kind of carry that on. Yeah. Yeah. That was, you know, for me, man, hearing that, that was a, a really strict, you know, I didn't believe it, you know, I, you know, I, I, we can all say that like when it came out, it was just all like, whoa, whoa, whoa. TMZ's uh, saying that this is happening, this news outlet, but when sports center announced it, then you knew that was real, you know, mm -hmm. um, and, mm -hmm. you know, like like we discussed from there, it just seemed like the whole year was just going downhill mm -hmm. from there. So, uh, you know, rest in peace, Kobe Bryant, rest in peace, Gigi and everybody else that, you know, left us on that on that horrific day. Yeah, sure. I, I don't know about you guys, but, you know, Scholastic Book Fair, you know, coming to the school, the posters, you know, you get the five dollars. Let's buy a poster. Kobe was my first poster, you know. Mm. Yeah, I, I I wish I I actually think I took a picture of the poster in my I had like the Polaroid or the uh, the little Kodak camera disposable camera <laughs> I got the pictures laying around but 
yeah it's 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 just crazy it's crazy to think you know that that started the the terrible year that was 2020 you know mm-hmm. and, and i mean even looking forward into into sports you know there was that huge layoff uh between you know the the cancellation of you know the the ncaa uh season and you know it was just as soon as you know the ivy league shut down and then the and then you know everybody's like all right the ivy league what's the ivy league going to do and then they fast forward it and it's it's all these big conferences are shutting down you're like wow you know this this thing's starting to hit for real you know during that time ryan what what were you doing to i mean if if you were even outside of the house what were you doing during that time to to prepare yourself for you know the upcoming season so basically um that all that stuff started happening i was senior in high school so we were all we were all looking forward to graduation and stuff like that um looking forward to everything that came in the spring once we've kind of realized that this is going to be a longer thing that this stuff isn't going to happen you kind of got to put that aside and you got to get ready for what's next so i just kept in shape just doing like push-ups sit-ups and then I would just find any of the nearest courts. So the ones in my town shut down. So you have to go find another town that didn't shut down yet. And then you go there the next day and that rim would be taken down. So it was kind of tough just kind of having to deal with that. And you have to get creative pretty much. I think that's what everybody kind of learned. You have to get creative with yourself. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> definitely definitely man uh you know let's go into it man growing up man what was your your childhood like you know uh you know besides you know finding the game of basketball what other stuff did you like to do you know as a kid uh pretty basic life i just always played sports um i tried to play as many sports as i could when i was younger um kind of narrowed it down to baseball and basketball played those two um and then when it came to high school, kind of came time to pick one because I knew um, I knew I can't really focus on both. So basketball is always my favorite. So I stuck with that. And um, ever since just been running with it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I think about that because, you know, that's that's one question I always try to go to because, you know, a lot of you know, you get to hear different situations, different stories from, you know, different uh, people, man. And, uh, you know, basketball, it always seems like when it comes to, you know, not just basketball, but sports in general, that just, you know, that's that one go-to where, you know, it tends to get you to, you know, stay focused on something, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, you know, it it keeps you away from the distractions um, from a lot of stuff, you know, that's around you, you know? you know, we had Trevor on last week and, uh, you know, I asked about, you know, in Wakefield in particular, you know, you hear, you hear a lot of, uh, unfortunately you hear a lot of negative and positive stuff that go around in Wakefield, especially at the high school. Like what were the challenges, you know, growing up in Wakefield, if you had any, you know, uh, when it came to, you know, just trying to stay focused and, and level headed and, you know, having that one common goal, you know? Yeah. Um, for me, Wakefield, I always had um, supportive people there. Um, but there's, like anywhere, there's always people who say they're there for you, and then they kind of want to see, want to see you fall, uh, fail. Mm. So it's kind of you gotta weed out the people that you know aren't gonna help you, and you gotta focus on the people that will help you and help you succeed. Um, so once I kind of did that, just kind of focused on those people and myself, and uh, ended up having a pretty good time in Wakefield really enjoy myself there and it turned out pretty well for me in the long run. Yeah. Yeah. That's great, man. Cause you know, like I said, I'm meeting you last summer, man. Uh, you know, and just honestly seeing, you know, when it comes to you, like how people gravitate towards you because, uh, you know, in that small time of meeting you, man, you seem, uh, such like, uh, such a humble kid, man. And, uh, young man, sorry, not a kid, but, <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, you know, man, I, I really, uh, I really, uh, respect how you carried yourself, especially when you, you were playing on the court, man. Um, you know, when I'm, when I say, uh, the basketball, what does, what does basketball mean to you? If, uh, when you hear that, 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 you know, when someone says basketball, I mean, for me now, it's just a, I know it's another part of my life. It's, 
everything is something you have to do every day. It's almost like a chore, but like you like doing that. So <laughs> it's like school, basketball, family. It's just another part of once I think freshman year, that's when I really like every single day. I'm like, okay, I have to get my work in, whether it be whatever, ball handling, shooting, playing, pickup, um, always just finding time for it. Yeah, that's, and that's you know, you know, speaking of that, you just mentioned it. You know, uh, go go a little bit more into depth on, on you know your family, man. Uh, you know, how is you know how how has your family impacted your your life? Yeah, so I'm an only child, so it's just myself and my parents. You got lucky um, there. <laughs> hey, I'm I the did. only child too, man. I'm the only child, so I I love meeting a former. Uh, I mean, not former. Uh, uh, a person that's. Uh, with me on this journey <laughs> it's a blessing, a blessing and a curse i guess yes blessing it and is a curse. Got this positive and negatives but uh yeah no they've been super supportive whatever i want to do whether it be driving me to aau tournaments 8 a.m games two hours away um whether it be taking me to practices or honestly just giving me advice um probably wouldn't be anywhere near where i am today without them Oh, man. Now, I think I ask almost everybody that personally knows Charles. <laughs> he he claims that he's this basketball. I mean, I call I call him basketball guru. I don't care. I call him a basketball guru. He is my basketball guru. I'll I'll rub his little head when it comes when it comes to playing against him. I don't think he's played against me. You, you've never played against him. I don't think I've played against him yet. We got to get this going. Yet. We, we oh, man. We See, now, all but, Dan, but Dan, look what you just did. He I don't said, care. He yeah. said yet. So that means yes. he's, now I got to worry about him. I got to <laughs> worry about Trevor. I got to worry about all these guys, man. Oh, man. Oh, let's let's go, sir, the summer. Go old, the summer. Let's go old versus young. It'll be me and you, Charles, right? <laughs> yeah. all right? I'm Don't the me. five. You're the one and the two. All right. <laughs> <laughs> let's get it. Let's get it in. Let's, let's show these young guys. How these old bucks do it? Listen, listen. He's a Ryan is a is a lefty, and uh, me personally, I hate uh, guarding lefties. I hate coaching left left handed players. <laughs> um, for some reason, they just are, are the best when it comes to basketball. Sometimes, but you know, uh, yeah. I mean, now he said yet. That means he wants to play me. So we're gonna have to make it happen. I'm probably won't get it on camera. Uh, oh, we're, we're gonna get it on camera. Yeah, right? on camera. Yeah. Well, what if he, there. Well, Okay, I guess. Okay, all right. So we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna have Ryan. We're gonna have Ryan and 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 Charles uh, go at it. Uh, and you know, Dan, either you could be my teammate or you could be the ref. You know, uh, you know, <laughs> sir. Why do I gotta be the ref? <laughs> <laughs> he's got he's got a winner. He's got a winner. Oh, you got a winner. Okay, yeah, 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 you got a yeah, winner. Yeah, yeah. You got a winner. <laughs> <You got next. laughs> <laughs> no, but um, Ryan, look looking looking into you know your your freshman right now at UMass. What uh? What made you choose UMass? Did you did you have other schools that you, you know you were interested in that that even you know showed interest in you? Are you are you there on a basketball scholarship? You know what what brought you to UMass? Yeah, so I originally had no plans of playing at UMass. Um, I was looking at like smaller, like high academic D three schools. Um, I had a couple of them pinned out, and I was talking to a few of them. Um, uh, so I'm a, I'm a business major. So UMass is a really good business school, the Eisenberg School of Management. So I always I applied to Eisenberg, no basketball, no nothing. Um, and I applied to the other smaller D3 schools. Um, and pretty much basketball didn't work out at the smaller D3 schools. It was between like me or another kid and they picked the other kid at both schools. Um, so I decided to come to UMass, no basketball at all. And then like a day or two after I enrolled there, the um, one of the assistants texted me on or DM'd me on Instagram. He said, hey, give me a call. I think we got a spot for you. And um, just got super lucky with that. A few mutual connections just set it up and it's just been there ever since. And now the spotlight's on you. I mean, you mess. You you guys <laughs> if you guys played a full season today, you know, you, you would have played some some pretty top teams. I mean, you made it you made it far this season. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, I, I wish I would have got to see you guys play the Bonnies, you know, VCU. But you know, that was a tough loss to St. Louis, you know, in the in the, uh, in the championship. Yeah, no, they're they're definitely a um, 
NCAA, they're definitely a tournament team. They just got screwed by COVID. Um, they just got, I mean, they were out for like a month or something. And then when they came back, just kind of, it's hard for you to get your rhythm back and all over a span of five games. Um, but yeah, the a 10s got some serious, serious teams for sure. Dude, some of these conferences, they're, they're overlooked and it's, it's mid majors. It's, it it kind of brings me back to uh, my, you know, I just, I I think I retweeted it the other day. Uh, Somebody put it up, you know, you look at this NCAA basketball championship, this tournament, you have schools that you would have never thought would be where they are. You never, you never would have thought Oral Roberts or, 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 you know, some of these tiny schools or schools like Loyola, Chicago. Mm -hmm. I look at it like, I want to see, the football program. I don't want to see this four team playoff, you know, like the same four teams we see every year, you know, this, this, despite the COVID, this tournament has been so exciting to watch. Mm-hmm. And it, For sure. it, it's crazy. And jumping back into COVID and you said, you know, it, it's taken guys, you know, guys, a couple, uh, like five days to get back into it. You know, looking at because I mean, you're you're. I see the Paul Pierce. I see the the big three behind you. You know, looking at you know Jason Tatum. You know, can you can you see the effects of him still blaming his game on COVID right now? Yeah, I mean, I feel like the fact that they're even he even mentions it is tells you that something's up there because these guys are professional athletes. They're obviously Jason Tatum's obviously a bucket. He's been doing that his whole life. And for him to say like COVID's actually affecting him, I think that just speaks to how serious it can affect some people and other people not even affect them at all. So that's kind of the struggle the NBA might will probably continue to have. Yeah, and you know, uh, keeping it with uh, the COVID, like how has COVID affected you uh, personally? Uh, you know, you know, I know you guys have a lot of restrictions and what you can and can't do. Uh, you know. Well, we can even dive in on socially. Like, how's that affected yeah. you? So, pretty much um, in the fall here at UMass, um, they didn't allow most of the students on campus. It was pretty much athletes and a, probably a thousand other students that were taking like labs or stuff like that. So, campus was pretty empty in the fall, um, and we had to be really strict socially. So, we had to stay in our own like bubble. We all stay on the same floor in our dorm, um, all of the same roommates together. So basically couldn't go out, can't go out to eat, can't have other people over here. Like it was really tough socially, pretty much from August to whenever our season was over, early in the month of March. Especially wow. looking at, you know, your freshman year, you you especially at UMass, you know, you're you're thinking greatest uh, freshman year. You could possibly have, <laughs> you know, <laughs> socially wise, just, yeah. just yeah. flush down it's, the toilet. It's a little better now because um, there's people here. Um, they just put up the uh, outdoor rims here, actually. Oh, so nice. kids can start running pick up and stuff um, and start to meet people. But it's just it's just really tough to it was tough to meet people back then. A little easier now, but definitely took its tolls uh, socially back throughout the season. Yeah. And uh, explain, man, like the, you know, again, y- you haven't technically fully experienced the college, you know, experience as of yet. But, you know, I- I've been to UMass Amherst twice. And every time I was there, I'm like, man, this is like a whole city, <laughs> you know, like it, that, explain how, you know, you know what the atmosphere is like or, you know, when you first got there, what did you, you know, think about, you know? Yeah. I mean, at first it's a little overwhelming. You Mm. see all these buildings and stuff and you have no idea where to go. Um, Like from our dorm to our practice facility, it's about like half an hour walk, 20 minute walk. Um, So it's just like little things like that. You take a little time to get used to. Um, Not having people here in the fall was a little bit easier Mm. because now they all came back in the spring and they're all trying to figure out stuff. Yeah. And I already kind of know, so it makes you feel a little bit better about that. Um, but no, it's definitely a great campus. Uh, it's like a real college feel. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, you know, 
going back to when you were a, a, a young kid, like who did you look up to if it was a family member or even a public fig figure? Um, I mean, I'm gonna go with my favorite player, hey. number five back there, AG. AG, uh, ticket. Oh, <laughs> everything he did, I would just watch him and stuff. Um, so actually, I went to one of their games, and I got close enough to get his high like high five from him, oh. and that was like the best day of my life. And I always remember <laughs> that, and like always looking up to him after that, and like still follow him to this day. Whenever he's on like a podcast, like he was on the uh, Matt Barnes podcast. All the smoke. I listened to that one. Mm -hmm. um, but now he's just like so inspirational, and like you see after they won the championship, all that emotion he had. Yeah. Um, it just. It just makes you like want to work. He's a, he's a gentle giant too. Mm -hmm. He's all he's all scary and stuff like that, but he he's he's not like that. Yeah. Do you uh do you try to you know not copy KG, but like when it comes to his intensity, um, when it comes to the game of basketball, do you try to like you know have that type of energy on the on the court? Yeah, for sure. Definitely. When I was younger, I would try to like lean on people because I'd see him leaning on people. <laughs> I would do that. And these kids would be like, what the heck is this kid doing? Um, <laughs> but it's always just carried over. It's just yeah. like, you have to be locked in when you're playing. It's just always way I've played. I'm not just going to go out there and just half-ass it. You have to go full speed all the time. Yeah. 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 And, uh, shout out to you, KG. Thank you for giving us our only championship in the past, what, 12, <laughs> freaking yeah. years. <laughs> no, uh, a lot of a lot of that credit goes to Doc too. Yeah, yeah, Doc too. Yeah, get uh, to handle some egos for sure. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> we, want, we want Doc back. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you know, again, going, you know, sticking on to your early childhood. Like, at what age, man, did you, you know, you notice that? Oh, uh, you know, I can, I can really play this game. You know, um, basically. I was always kind of the, one of the taller kids in my team. Um, so, like, by fifth or sixth grade, I knew I was pretty good, but I wasn't even the best on my team. Um, by seventh seventh grade, I met my um, AAU coach, Antonio Anderson, uh, former Memphis player under Calipari, um, pretty much my mentor. Um, he took me under his wing, and ever since I started work with him then, my game just took off. I By eighth grade, I was – probably one of the best on my team. Mm. Uh, I was getting looked at by like prep school, but I stayed home and just stayed with him and just everything worked out like that. So um, all credit to him. He helped me out big time. And just like my game just took off with him. Crazy. Man, man. And, uh, and that, and that's just, that just goes to show. I really uh, respect what you said, man. You stayed home and you, you know, you kept going with it. Why change something that's working? Right. Why, mm -hmm. why, why try to, you know, have that, you know, that switch where you have the momentum. Um, and I really respect that, man. I mean, you know, and that's great that you had certain mentors you had, you know, like you said earlier, you had your family members there with you, man. Uh, I think that's one of the, the keys, one of many uh, keys to success in life, you know, um, staying on the, the right path. Um, and that's credit to everyone supporting you, man. And um, I'm pretty sure every day you still get that, um, especially with college, man. Uh, you know, these are the moments where, you know, you start to learn a lot more about yourself, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Big time. Big time, right? Big time. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and again, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to, you know, but you're going to learn from it. You're going to bounce back. And uh, that's a huge uh, credit to your support system for sure. Yeah, definitely. All credit to them. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, what are you uh what are you planning on on doing you know it's just just you know thinking hypothetically you know basketball doesn't work out you know you're going to school for business what do you uh what do you plan do you plan on doing something in the in the basketball field or, or sports field or just... so ever since i i, I kind of realized I'm probably not going to be a professional basketball player that was my dream job but like kind of leaning away from that i do i always had like an idea i've always wanted to be like a front office gm um, I've always liked seeing like the, all the rules and all the salary cap, all that type of stuff. Um, so I think I'm going to pursue a major in finance and see where that takes me with that. 
Um, hope they get an internship or something in the uh, pro sports world. But if not, there's always other jobs in finance and stuff that I can always uh, focus on. And if I find out that's not the route for me, I can always – we have a bunch of other majors here in um, Eisenberg that I can go to. And I'm going to put my coaching hat on uh, <laughs> real quick. Uh, don't – I want you to – I want you to keep striving, though. You know, I, re- yeah. I really want you to keep striving for that goal. Um, if it's not the NBA, man, you can. It's overseas, right? And, and and again, I I love that you have a plan, a plan, a plan uh, B and C, and yeah. you know, continue. And that's that's respect for you. But you know, it's like you said, with your favorite player being KG, your your uh, uh, certain support systems that you have that just adds more fuel to you. That adds more mm-hmm. fuel to you. really like try to tap into something else you know what i mean meaning like get outside yourself and really try to you know if you really want it man hey you got it you know what i'm saying and again uh i I do respect that you have a plan a plan b you know and uh and go for that as well but you know i just really if just knowing uh knowing you a little bit you know i i do see something special in you when it comes to the game of basketball and again it's not just about basketball um, it's more to it's more to it, you know. Life life mm-hmm. has its course, but I, I, I just really take that into consideration. That man, this is not it, you know. I know <laughs> you get what I'm saying. Hey, maybe yeah, next, no, I appreciate that. Yeah, appreciate maybe that. next year you're gonna have a dominant year, and then the year after, and, you know, it's just just really really work on your craft even even more, you know, and have yeah. trust in it, and then you know the universe will, will will help you out for sure, man. But that was just my coaching hat, <laughs> you know, I had a coaching moment, you know. Uh, because uh, again, I, I want to see young young uh, men like yourself, um, young athletes, especially with the game uh, that I love as well. Um, I know when I see someone special, and that can be uh, uh, really effective in you, in, you know, with the basketball culture for sure. You know, appreciate that. Appreciate oh, that. For sure. For and that's sure. the thing. You know, what's what's up with these guards being you know taller than me? I'm six one. <laughs> you know? I, check, I check out. I check out his stats. He's six three. Yeah. 185 <laughs> pounds, according to the UMass website. And you want <laughs> five, you want a five six to guard him? Yeah, I'm five, six, yeah. How? How? Man, you can, I, have have you ever seen, seen the original? You ever see the original Space Jam? <laughs> run through people's legs. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, man. Oh, six three. I didn't know you six three. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I, I I think I gained like um, 10, 15 pounds when I got here. I used to be really, really skinny. Got got some weight up, so there you keep go. Up hopefully that's all muscle and not beer belly, right? We'll find out in the summer when it's comes in the pool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> find out. Oh man, but sure, man. Uh, you know, uh, and that just and you know we'll stick to it, man. Like. I know, I know you said you talked about it a little bit, but you know, when it comes to the game of basketball, what are your, what are the certain goals you want to achieve with your your college basketball career? Yeah, so pretty much as a uh, walk on, it's kind of like you have to put your the team over yourself. Yeah. So there's a lot of days when like there'll be ten guys at practice, and I'm the eleventh guy, and I'll be on scout team or something. And then say one dude goes down, rolls his ankle or something, then you go right in, you're the 10th guy, and it's expected you perform just like a scholarship player. So pretty much just holding my end of the bargain. I just do whatever I can to help the team um, every day. And kind of you kind of just don't want to like make a scene. You just want to blend in, you just want to be a fly on the wall and do whatever you can. Do little things. Little things is the this is the most important part. Does it does it does it get frustrating a, a little bit? Does your you know competitive side get the best of you sometimes? Where you you're watching in certain games, and you're like, man, I can be I can impact in this certain way. Or you know. um, yeah, it took a little bit to get used to because in yeah. high school you're used to being 32 minute a night player, didn't come out of the game, and that's in college not playing at all. So it was frustrating at first, but once you learn to have success or learn to appreciate other people's success, mm-hmm. that's like so much more like rewarding and stuff seeing the the team actually win is so much more rewarding i mean like you said you know being a walk-on freshman i think you have what two seniors on that team 
uh, leaving. Yeah. One, of them, one of them's a guard. You know, mm-hmm. and you got a couple of uh, sophomore juniors. I, I see, you know, walk-ons. You know, like you just said, you know, you gotta you gotta participate as you know full scholarship or or you know somebody that's been recruited. What I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, your your game's gonna progress. You're gonna get those minutes next year. I mean, I I do see, you know, you in your game like I just said, progressing, and you're going to see a lot of minutes next year. You know, what are your, what are your expectations for next year? Are you going to try and, you know, beat out those other, uh, those other guards? Um, I mean, as a competitor, you always want to try to beat out the other people. Um, but if whatever the coaches need me to do, if they need me to be a scout team, I'll be a scout team. I have no problem doing that. Um, every day, just kind of getting the same rhythm, always getting extra shots up. Um, either maybe sometimes rebounding for scholarship players. It's literally whatever the coaches need. Yeah. Um, yeah that's what I love. That, yeah. That's what I love hearing. You know, it's, it's, you know, players just, you know, they're, they don't care about, you know, whether they're, they're out there for 30 minutes a game, you know, like, like he just said, you know, he's there for the team. He's not there to, you know, pump his stats or do this. He's there, whatever they need, whatever the coaches need. And that's what I think some of these NBA players need a lesson on. To be mm-hmm. honest, with you. Mm-hmm. and you know, they—I I think some of them should start watching this and you know take some advice from Marcus, uh, Ryan, Ryan Marcus, you know, <laughs> and uh, you know, even even looking back at you know Trey last week, you know, I, I just see two young, humble guys, you know, excited for their seasons, excited to do best for the team, and like he just put it, he's there for the team. Yeah, and, and that's gonna that's gonna take you a long way, Ryan. Man, you you got this. Um, and again, uh, I think at the end of the day, right, you could probably agree to this. As long as you're stepping on that court, no matter if it's practice, rebounding for guys, doing certain drills, that makes that's your that makes you feel good. Just dribbling that basketball, right? Really working mm-hmm. on your on the craft, you know. I mean, yeah, I, I when I came here or when I enrolled at UMass, I thought I was done playing. I didn't think I would have. I thought I was retired, uh, <laughs> but I was like, every time you get just like just shooting around or just going there and seeing our facility and stuff, it's just like, just lucky to be here. I know there's hundreds of kids probably in Massachusetts who'd kill to be in my spot. Um, so that's kind of extra motivation too. You know, there's always someone else out there that would, that envies you. Um, so yeah, yeah, just lucky. <laughs> and, and I saw it too, man. Like, uh, when you posted it last year uh uh about you uh getting that 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 time to to be on the on the squad man I, I could tell by your post even i think it was your 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 second post as well when you're taking the uh the team picture you know i could see see how appreciative you you felt you 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 look you know just having the opportunity to wear that umass amber jersey jersey man and uh you know, uh, again, man, I, I know I sound like a broken record, but that just that's credit to your support system, how you carry yourself, how everybody that's had a positive impact in your life, how they, you know, want you to just continue to grow. You know, that's a that's a great way to, to handle your situation that you're in now. And it's not it's not even a bad situation. It's, everybody goes through where you're at right now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And again, as long as you you know who you are and the, the, the work that you put in. You know, it'll, it'll pay off for sure. You know, yeah, it really, really yeah will. definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did, did you play any of those sports when you were uh, when you were a kid? And being Wake fan, uh, I played baseball up to freshman year. So I was a lefty. I was a pitcher, pitcher in first base. Um, yeah, didn't didn't throw too fast, but I was pretty accurate. I got got a little curveball. So yeah, <laughs> played like football. Young, uh, Kershaw. Uh, I did not play football. I think I, I played Pop Warner for like two weeks. They put, me on, they put me a left guard, and I just couldn't do that. You know, I can't do this. Uh, yeah. I'm, su- I'm surprised Wakefield High didn't use you as like a receiver or something like that. You know, I think I think I I, I knew the coach, um, he, but he was like, "I know you're not going to play bat or play football. I know you too. Much. I know you're not trying to football out here. So, yeah. Not happening." <laughs> oh man, uh, you know, you know, in high school, man, uh, 
do you do you have a moment or a certain situation where you know you you will always remember that for the rest of your life when it comes to basketball was there a certain shot you made a clutch shot or certain still clutch still that you you made or you know you know do you have any type of moments that you know comes to mind yeah um my junior year actually it was like i think like a minute 30 left and um i took i think i took a charge on some kid it was our playoff game and the place was packed i took a charge on this kid and the place like went crazy um i go back on film and i just watch that and just like makes you smile uh but then we ended up losing that game but like that that moment right there that was like really satisfying i definitely can remember that um and senior night too walking out there with my parents and stuff um uh, that was pretty rewarding both all three of us um that was awesome and that and that that's from playing with crowds right you know you it's a different type of feeling right where oh, so, yeah <laughs> you make that certain play the crowd. I think I've been to two Wakefield uh basketball games and man, you guys come out and show out. <laughs> that's the Red sea. The Red sea, call it. Yeah, and uh man, that that that's 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 amazing to see. Um you guys didn't play in front of crowds this this uh this past season, right? Uh, hey, you right. can't count you can't count all those cardboard cutouts out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had we had those. Um, but no, no substitute for uh, real fans. Yeah, how did how did that uh 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 feel? Uh, just you know, seeing an empty gym and oh, you know, it, it was it was tough at first. At at first, it was real tough. Um, but one thing that kind of developed over that is whatever team's bench was louder and more energetic. That team was always the better team that game. So as someone who's on the bench and like some of our other walk-ons and our managers, our goal is just be standing the whole game, making as much noise and stuff to get all those guys ready. And all act up. <laughs> Did you hear like the real trash talking? <laughs> oh yeah, you hear, hear everything. <laughs> and then you'll have guys looking over at the bench, like talking to us. <laughs> like we're not doing anything. <laughs> Leave me alone, man. Come on, bro. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, hopefully we'll have some fans next year. Get some get some kids to the games. Oh yeah, imagine that. Big Definitely need that cool. fan section. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah. Oh man, that's that's incredible. I always say, man, I don't know what you know how I would react or be you know feel if I was in some of you guys' shoes during this this crazy time we're in. You know, when it comes to playing sports, because. You know, you feed off a certain energy, you feed off the crowd. But again, you know, feeding off your teammates, you know, I think a lot a lot of a lot of people tend to forget that's the most important thing, though. Those 10 to 12, 13 guys that you have, it's just you guys, you know what I mean? And you guys have right. to make sure that you are all want at all one, you know, all together. Right. And uh and the yeah. the crowd is just extra, extra fuel, you know. But you know, I, I really it's interesting you say that that like because that's been the common you know uh, theme here when we've had certain guests on is you know they're saying you know feeding you know getting their teammates involved uh, and the, the 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 team that has you know the loudest bench uh, is always the the one that's you know ends up winning or you know the momentum switch mm -hmm. you know so yeah. all momentum yep yeah it's all momentum. all momentum yeah so you know that's a that's really again we hope to see fans there you know i'm sure me and dan will be pulling up oh to yeah UMass. <laughs> i think i think i'm a little bit closer to him now yeah. <laughs> i think we, we got a few we got a few games probably out towards boston too so okay okay boston school so we'll see we'll yeah. see what happens next year yeah for sure for sure you yeah. know definitely gonna lock it up and I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to pop a jersey up there too so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, you know, I have a question. Uh, you know, it's a, you know, a little segment. Uh, five seconds left. All right, five seconds left. You're inbounding the ball. All right, you have. Let me see. What I got KD. You got LeBron. You got Jordan and Kobe. Five seconds left. Now all all those four guys get open. <laughs> Who are you passing the ball to? I'm not giving to LeBron because I don't like LeBron. <laughs> I don't like LeBron. <laughs> um, I like him already. 
<laughs> it's, it's, I respect Kobe, but if I'm going to give it to Kobe, I might as well give it to Jordan. Mm. But KD's, KD's just that dude. Yeah. KD, you're not stopping. Seven-footer, getting to his spot and getting there, you're not stopping that. <laughs> I, I think I got to go with KD. Got to go with KD? I think I got to. It's him or Jordan. That's tough. I think him it's KD. Jordan. Ooh, that's that's tough. That's tough. I I think for me, I would, I would say, I would say, I would say Jordan because he's my favorite. Yeah. Nice, but I think the second option would be for me. It would be Kobe. Just the fact that, like you said, if you're gonna give the ball to Kobe, you might as well give it to Jordan because they're basically mm-hmm. not the same, but you know they're <laughs> a, mer- a certain same, same game. game. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. same game. Uh, so that's uh that's interesting to see who you got, Dan. Who, but who you got you got I mean, I mean you gotta look at La Flop, all right? If you get the ball to La Flop, <laughs> if you get the ball to La Flop, we on. all know we all know for a fact he's gonna draw two. Yeah. You know, he's gonna he's gonna hit that bucket, and if he's behind the arc, he's gonna go he's gonna go for a four point play. But I don't trust him, I don't like him. I'm definitely not <laughs> I'm definitely not going with LeBron. Come on, Jordan, man. Give give no. King James some credit, man. Uh, give King nope, James some credit. I'm not no, nope, I'm not LeBron James. No, nope, not, <laughs> not happening. Okay. It is going to Jordan. And you know, if if yeah, you know, it goes back to you know what you guys just said. If you're gonna give it to Kobe, you know, it's it's definitely Jordan Kobe. Yeah. KD, mm, I mean, if you really want to win the game and you want to win the game by more than one, yeah, give it to LeBron. But he's hit or miss. Yeah. yeah. Could go down with an injury. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> come come on. Man. Or hey, <laughs> let's be honest. The game, hey, when we were talking uh, before we went live, like the game has been so boring. I think it's be, mostly it's because LeBron is hurt right now. And yeah. that's just credit to him, I think. It's just me because. I just feel like when LeBron retires, man, basketball, we're gonna miss LeBron a little bit. You know, I think not I think, out here. <laughs> not out here. Not out here. He's, he's gonna be he's gonna be part he's part owner of the Red Sox right now. So. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. That's we'll be true. Seeing him around here more often. <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah. That's true. <laughs> uh you know, Ryan, man, uh, you know, uh before practice, before a workout, you know. What type of what type of music you listening to? Who are you listening to to get you hyped or just really focused for a nice workout? You know, um, I mess with Lil Baby. Ah, I think can't, baby. Can't, can't go wrong with him right now. Um, yeah, I feel like every song he makes and produces and puts out, yeah, you just can't go wrong with it. <laughs> uh, I'm also a big Uzi Uzi fan, but uh, okay. he hasn't been. He's been slacking a little bit, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, when when he drops, so you know it's you know it's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, little little Uzi and little baby, I like that. I like that very much. Uh, two two guys that can get you really hyped for a game or practice for sure. You know. Yeah, I'm sorry. Definitely. I don't know. I, I don't think I've ever listened to a single song from either one of them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll let you listen to a few songs uh, later on. That's just that's just bringing my. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I'm old school rap kind of guy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, just, I don't think Ryan knows about. Is, those is he? A, is he? A, are they? Mum, are they mumble rappers? Or like, yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, yeah, spot on, spot on, right there. Yeah, I can't do that. <laughs> I mean, it's easy to sing along, you know, trying to trying to get you know some. Li- I mean, when I was a kid, I used to you know pop on AZ lyrics and I'd be rapping with all the songs. <laughs> now it's like, I don't even know what you'd see across the screen. If you, if you yeah. were trying to rap with them. It's, it's the beat. I think it's the beat. Everybody. It's, just as knows. I say, it's, it's definitely the beat. Yeah. And you're just, the, the, the lyrics are just kind of there. Most of them don't really mean anything. Right. Right. Yeah. Catchy. <laughs> Catchy. Maybe I just need to open my little bubble. All right. I'll open my bubble. <laughs> For sure, man. Uh, you know, Ryan, I, a few more questions I have for you, bro. Like, you know, in what way, you know, has has the game, you know, changed your life? You know, the game of basketball, how, how has it changed your life? You know, if you think um, of it overall, you know? I think it just showed me that, like, whoever is the most talented or you say you have the most talent or most skilled or anything, doesn't matter if you have all that, if you don't work hard. Um if you're slacking, there's, they'll always find a way to catch you. 
it's going to – basketball always finds the people who aren't working hard, whether it be the dude who's not playing defense, um, gets backdoor cut or something like that. Um, in life, it's the same thing. It translates right over. You have to stay consistent with your work and stay on top of stuff. And if you're not doing that, you're going to fall behind in life. You won't be achieve the goals you want to get to. Yeah, that's a great answer, man. A really good answer. Um, you know, I, I feel like – Oh, go ahead, Dan. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was I was just gonna ask him how he feels about these super teams in the NBA right now. Mm. I mean, LeBron started them, so it's people say it's all to take down LeBron, but I don't know. It's it's tough because especially they're all these big market teams. It's kind of taken away from it. Kind of like you know, I feel like we all know that it's gonna be Brooklyn, LA in the finals. Yeah, it's like you can kind of predict it. Um, so I don't know. Mixed feelings about it. Mixed feelings right now. But. Yeah, and I was gonna ask you who, you know, who who are you watching uh, right now in the NBA? Who who are you, you know, really looking at right now? Definitely not the Celtics, right? As I said, fortunately, I've been watching the Celtics a little bit. Break, break, break my heart every night watching them play. Yeah, literally every night. Um, but nah, I heard you just tune in to ESPN. Whoever's playing the primetime games. Um, I like watching the Mavs. I really like watching Luca play. Oh gosh, uh, he did. so what he did to us last night. Oh gosh, <laughs> I, I like watching Brooklyn play too. Yeah, the, those three scores. I don't think KD's been playing recently, but those three scores together, mm. that's that's tough to stop. Yeah. I don't think you're beating that in a seven game series. No, oh. definitely not. <laughs> Uh, even even uh, if you go even if you go up 2-0 in a series, you're still on edge because any any time a day, Kyrie, KD, Harden will just bring them back uh, with a 40 piece uh, for the rest yeah, of the series. You, you, you can't outscore them. Yeah. It's impossible. You're not going to outscore them. So it's like know. looking looking what the Nets just did to the to the Hornets tonight. You know? <laughs> Yeah, you know, who did who do they even have playing? <laughs> and Lamar exactly. Aldridge and Kyrie Irving. They beat them 111 <laughs> 89. You know? And they're playing defense now. They're uh, playing defense. So it's just getting crazy. You know. Uh but you know, yeah, who else are you watching? You, you, you know, do you you know or try to mimic your game off of if you Yeah. I've I've been watching a lot of shooters. So when I got here, I kind of transformed my game, uh, more so like a specialist like three point shooter. Um, like corners, wings. Mm. So try to watch guys like Joe Harris, hopefully Clay when he's back. Um, yeah. All those guys are spot up knockdown shooters. Um, you just got to watch like their footwork and stuff and all this stuff, they counters, all types of stuff like that. Um, you see that and try to do it the next day in the gym. Mm. Yeah, I'm just yeah. happy he didn't say Marcus Smart. Oh, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> love him, love him, but he's got to he's got to chill with the shots. <laughs> he's got to chill. <laughs> the whole team needs to chill. I think I think the NBA should just I don't know suspend the Celtics for the rest of the season. <laughs> they, they, clearly, they clearly they clearly don't like each other, but that's just my opinion. Yeah. But you know, uh, <laughs> you know, it is what it is. I, but again, at the same time, you know, COVID year, it is real. So you know, you know, it's it's tough on everybody. But you know. Uh, you know, my last question for you, man. Um, you know, if you look back already, you know, do you regret anything uh, in your in your life? Do you regret, or do you just you you appreciate and love where you're at right now in your life? I, I love, I love the spot I'm at right now. I always I always think about it. I always think back like, oh, what would happen if I went to a different high school? Mm. Um, what if I happened if I went to a different college, played D three instead? Um, but like, I honestly have no complaints for I am right now, especially with COVID and everything. People, mm -hmm. there's a lot more to be complaining about than not being able to go out and stuff because of COVID. Get lucky to wake up and go to the gym and have play for a Division One basketball team. I didn't think told me a year ago today I wouldn't believe that. Man. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just crazy. It's crazy how if one kid can get lucky. Like that, yeah. continue to work hard. We'll be, catch, we'll be catching you on ESPN next season, that's for sure. <laughs> hopefully we got a few games on ESPN. Yeah. I think we had one or two this year, so hopefully a few next year. 
I, I second, I second that. I second that. I, I know he's gonna have a, a bounce back uh, second year in school for sure. Yeah. Can't wait to see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's my guy right there. Uh, you know, uh, I know I said I had one more question, but uh, you know, he's always just, <laughs> yeah. I know I always got one more for you. <laughs> uh, you know, when you're when you know, when it's all said and done with your 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 college career, man. Uh, you know, where where do you see yourself going? You know, uh, I know you said you want to get into finance, but you know. What else do you have uh, that you want to accomplish? You know, basketball after. goal. I def yeah. for a basketball goal by the end of uh, my career, definitely want to make the tournament. That's a lot of people's goals, and everyone says they want to do that, but it's kind of like you gotta, you really gotta be committed to that. You have to keep that on your mind every day when you're say you're running a suicide, your fifth suicide or something. You got to keep that in mind that oh, like this is your goal. You got to push harder to do that. Um, and hopefully by the time my career is over, we'll have had some success, some success wins wise and hopefully get to the tournament somehow. So. Yeah. Everybody just needs to watch out You know, watch out for the Minutemen. Never <laughs> that, you know, even, even looking at, you know, the UMass football team, and I mean, comparing apples and oranges, but <laughs> I mean, I I see the basketball team. They, I mean, you guys are a lot better than the football team. Do you guys ever play like pickup games with the basketball squad? Because I, <laughs> I know Actually, we, talked, we talked we talked with Trey last week, and he's like, it's funny watching football players trying to. Well, it's, it's, it's the same thing. We we um. So the court just opened up last week, and we saw like a bunch of football dudes there, and they're just like these huge dudes, like jacked. <laughs> but they're just like they're throwing shots up and it's just like not even close. They're just like running around <laughs> out there. But uh you know if you're if you're playing against them, you don't want to get you don't want to get like a shoulder to your chest. You know that's gonna yeah that'll leave a mark. So I don't know, we'll we'll see. We'll probably probably run a few games with them, see how it goes. That'd be fun to Just watch. <laughs> Just don't go in the paint, man, because you know they have that tackle mentality. So oh, no. in the paint. Oh, I'm saying <laughs> shoot three, shoot three, so me. <laughs> you get in the paint, man. Just know you're gonna get hit. So just prep yourself. <laughs> uh, for sure. Uh but yeah, Ryan, it's been it's been a it's been a great uh great interview, bro. Uh you know, like me and Dan say all the time, man. Uh when we have every time we have guests on, we just want to make our guests feel real comfortable and you know again it's just like three you know three human beings just talking sports you know three guys just talking sports and you know really we want it's all about our guests and we just want our viewers and listeners to 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 get to know you even more um and um and to to expect something uh in the future from you you know um and uh, something to keep an eye out for yeah for sure and uh sure. again i know i'm gonna see you this summer uh, hopefully we can get some training sessions in as well. Um, sure. I'm sure. looking forward. I'm looking forward to your journey. Uh, your your journey going forward. And uh, you know, man, you know I'm here as well, man. So you you know I'm always a uh, call away or you know DM me on Instagram. We'll chat it up, bro. For sure. No, I just appreciate take, you guys having me. Had a great take, time. It, take it easy on them this summer, all right? <laughs> whoa, whoa, wait, wait, Dan, you're you're in it too. You're in I, it am, too. I am. I am. I got winner. I got winner. You got winner. <laughs> I'm gonna need a couple of warm-up games first. <laughs> Way of lines or something. <laughs> like that fat guy shooting a uh, basketball. What is it? The Geico commercial or something? <laughs> oh, uh, chucking it over the boards. <laughs> yeah, That's why I play hockey and football. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Ryan, man, we appreciate you, bro. Uh, again, man, uh, it was a pleasure. Um, and uh, you know, we'll talk to you soon, bro. Hopefully, you come back on. Can't wait to watch. Sure, Can't wait to watch appreciate your journey it. and see where you're going. Yes, appreciate sir. It. Yeah. All right. Man, so, all right. All right, my guy. All right, be all good. Right. All right. Yeah. All right. An another humble, humble, humble individual that we had on. Uh, shout out to Ryan Marcus again, man. We appreciate you for coming on, bro. Uh, 
that was a great great interview for sure definitely sure. was i mean it's it's you know i i feel like we say it with every guest you know it's 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 just being humble and seeing him as you know this walk on freshman yeah he didn't get he didn't get much time this you know this season you know just pretty much going by his stats but you know just like he said he's there for the team he's not He's not there for himself. He's there to develop his game. He's there to push himself further and further. Oh, coach needs me to go, you know, do this. All right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do a smile on my face. I'm going to better my game. Just watch me come out. And that's that's what I like to see, you know, these, these young kids. And, you know, I even set it up there. You know, I think some of these professional ballers need to, you know, take a little bit of advice from these younger college guys I mean, college, I mean, basketball in general, you know, you, you have such a smaller space to get in the league yeah. and, and it's, I mean, it's, it's just humbling to listen to, you know, Ryan, it's, it's been humbling to listen to all of our guests, to be honest. Yeah. And, you know, they, they're all, all right, I'll do it. I don't care. I'll do it. Yeah, I'll do it. And that's, you know, I love that. I love that. I love the passion yeah. and I, I, I mean, it's, I mean, that's pretty much all I can say is it's, it's just passion for the game, passion to help out your team. Yeah. And, I mean, they had a, they had a, they had a really good season this year. Yeah. UMass. I can't wait to see what they do next year. Yeah. I think they had like four or five games canceled though. That's yeah. I believe so. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. they had, they had like three or four in a row. <sighs> yeah. This, this is this COVID year, man. It's a, uh... It's been a little difficult for a lot of programs, uh, but to 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 piggyback what you said, man, it's just you know all, all our guests. The one common thing I can say that they all have is they're all humbled, and mm-hmm. they're, they're they're really they're willing to just put in the work and just let let whatever happens happens. You know what I mean? And just keep pushing through. You know whatever, especially during these times, man. These times are so hard and it's difficult, but. I just I I just feel like I, I just learn a lot more about just the human mind that you know every time you know you go through something you just got to keep going keep going keep going keep going and just don't don't let it you know affect you in a negative way for sure man and again that's just credit to all our guests that's been been on um, so shout out to all our guests man. It's just, it's crazy, and especially all this stuff with the NCAA right now. With this, <laughs> with, with this tournament, it's just been. It, I'll say it, it's been one hell of a ride so far. <laughs> so far. <laughs> but I got we're... over the fact that you know, honestly, <laughs> I got over the fact that the bra- my brackets got all messed up, and I just really just sat down and start really just watching the game. Because if you think about it, man, at the end of the day, no matter what, the game is still beautiful. How it's yeah. been being been played, you know. Uh, th- I, again, a lot of professional athletes need to start watching more of these tournament games or just the whole college season because they want it. You see it; they want it. Oh yeah, they want it. But it's just a f- it's, it's it just sucks because you know the guys that want it right now in college when they get to professional. The way the the way it's it's panned out with with the NBA, you tend to fall for the limelight, and then you tend to forget sometimes, you know how hard you want you worked in college. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I, I but I get it because you, you made it, you made it to your goal. You have you got the money now. You get to feed your family. Yeah, and which, which respect I respect it, but it's just man, the love, the passion. Uh, that these these players are playing with um, during the tournament, for especially, is just oh man, it's credit to them, man. And uh, you know, I'm all I'm all for the the tournament right now. Huge upset, UCLA. Uh, that was. <laughs> <laughs> I've been telling you. I've been telling you. Michigan's gonna go down. I'm. I'm still uh, waiting for Gonzaga to go down. Oh right. my god! It's gonna Michigan. come. They were. Gonna they come. were cold the the last few minutes. They hit missed their last seven shots, and there were good looks. They just rushed a lot of shots. That big and, uh, I just yeah, and I felt for Juwan Howard. And shout out to Juwan Howard, man, uh, the head coach for Michigan, because you, you had a hell of a season. Uh, you man, if you haven't, if you guys didn't watch. Michigan play 
the way they play defense is very inspiring. They work hard. They work hard. They don't switch on the screens like all the NBA players do. You know, every time a pick is being screened, they're switching. No, they're fighting through those screens. They're talking on defense. They're hustling on every play. It's just offensively they were, you know, uh, you know, they couldn't really finish the the job. But, again, uh, no need to have oh, – Put your heads down, Wolverines. Even though it's tough to go all to go that far, and, and again, I, I was rooting for you guys. Um, I know but, you were. You had them winning the whole thing. I had them winning the whole thing, man. Uh, but then I thought about. It, I was like, man, it's been a great season, man. Uh, and then you know, myself for self said, ah, it's a COVID year. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, whatever. Again, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Again, shout out to uh, the Michigan Wolverines, man. Oh man! All right, we'll uh, we'll catch a quick break, and we're gonna come back with some NBA games. We only got a couple of them. We only got a couple of them. We'll we'll talk some more uh, NCAA yeah. uh, basketball action. Our picks from now until <laughs> was it Monday? Monday. Monday. Yeah, Monday. Yeah. Monday. Monday. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, we'll we'll hit a quick break. We'll be right back. All right. <sighs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable, man. <laughs> man, I need I need Gonzaga to lose. That's all. <laughs> all I need. Then, hey, I don't know if they're gonna lose. I think they might win this thing. <laughs> Cause they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna kill uh UCLA. They're gonna yeah, kill I think I think the point spread opened up at fifteen. Yeah. Uh, and and, and I think it's up. I think it's going up. <laughs> it, 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 they just don't have no they have nobody to match Gonzaga's uh, firepower, uh, you know. Especially that kid Timmy. Yeah, man. Uh, but again, uh, UCLA they play hard too. They play hard. Uh, they just hopefully they can. They're gonna have to really play great defense against this Gonzaga team. I don't know. <sighs> All right, so we have. Three games you three games you sent me. <laughs> I mean, I I mean it's just going back to what you said, you know, there's nothing entertaining in the NBA right now. I'm I mean, starting to fall out of love with the NBA right now. Seriously. I'm starting to fall back in love with college ball, to be honest. Yeah, with you. yeah. Seriously, man. I mean, I think I think the last time I actually watched college basketball like like I'm watching now was probably Eighth grade. <laughs> oh, really? It's been that long? Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> two thousand was it? Two thousand four. Oh wow. Yeah. I mean, I used to. I used to love my BC Eagles. Oh, BC. Once upon a time, they were really. They were. Oh, they were watchable. <laughs> you know what I mean? But then. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it was the last time they were relevant. Was it Reggie Jackson or Jared Dudley or something like that? Uh, Jared Dudley was the man. He was the man. I don't care what anybody said. He had he was what he was rocking those dreads that he had. It was, a, yeah, it was a jersey. Yeah, yeah. Let, was let, jersey. Me, let me pop him up, Jared. <laughs> I thought was Brady. Actually, it was Brady. That was two thousand. That, that what, what year was that? That must have been like two thousand two. Yeah, two thousand two, two thousand one. Yeah, he was the man. Shooting Jared threes, Dudley. playing defense. Was Reg no Reggie Jackson was on that team? I just googled Jared Dudley and it says right here people ask what happened to Jared Dudley. <laughs> <laughs> he got his ring, man. He got I champion. know. <laughs> BC. Because how far did they get in the tournament that year? Um. Uh, oh, he had he had the cornrows. He had the chin strap. Yep. 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 yep, yep. Man, I. I did they I get far in the tournament? They did, right? Yeah, a little bit. I, th I think they sweet sixteen was it? No, they didn't get that far. No, I think I they just made that. the tournament. <laughs> Lost in the first round, I think. I think. Or did or they even get in the tournament? I'm not sure. BC Eagles men's basketball. Two. What was that? Two thousand two. Two thousand two, maybe. Two thousand two. Two thousand three. Mm -hmm. uh, Jared Dudley wasn't even on the team. 
2002, 2003. I think it must have been 2001. Dan Jared though has been in the league for a while. Wow. Okay. Well, you had you had homie from uh you had, you had Brian Ross from North Quincy and Jermaine Watson from Dorchester. Wow. Brought it back. <laughs> what was their record that year? Do you, is, is it showing? Um team opponent stats. Uh, per game, they had 32 games in totals. Yes. I don't even know. I don't even know. <laughs> uh, Jared Dudley, I'm telling you that. Jared guy. Dudley. We went on a we went on a uh, a rec league or a uh, city league basketball. Uh, Field trip to a BC game, and that's why that's, that's when I fell in love with Jared Dudley. Yeah, that boy can shoot back then. That boy can uh, shoot. Yeah. All right, you ready? Let's get it. All right, all right, all right. We'll give it uh, we'll give it five seconds. We're at 106.15. All right, we're back. We got a. Uh, we're keeping we're keeping the NBA slate short because, as Charles and I just discussed, the NBA season is pretty much going down the toilet because it it's, it's unwatchable, especially with the with the college basketball championship going on right now. Um, you know, we have we have three games that we want to want to talk about, and uh, then we'll we'll hop into some uh, college hoop action and. Give our <laughs> whatever's whatever's left of our <laughs> of our oh, brackets. <laughs> oh, jeez! Uh, I, I think I've been out since the uh, Sweet Sixteen. Yeah. <laughs> hey, at least you made it that far. My my first round was just oh, jeez. I think I only missed nine in my first round. <laughs> hey, my ducks! My ducks got lucky. They didn't have to play yeah. VCU, but <laughs> um, yeah. 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 Oh well. well. All right, let's uh. Let's let's start it off here. You want to? I'll let you take it. Take it away, Charles. Take it away, Charles. Let's 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 just start off hot. Let's go Rockets versus Celtics. And I know a lot of you guys are saying, "Why the Rockets? Why the Rockets?" But guess what? There's another team that is on the Rockets level. <laughs> the Boston Celtics. I can't um, believe I can't believe they're down that low right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, like Dan, how do you like? Honestly, man, how do you really feel about this team, man? Like, how do you are you are you starting to 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 give up on the the Celtics? I gave up on them like I think last year. Wow. No, um, I I mean they started off the Eight season. Three? Yeah, they started off the season very well, and I don't know what has been happening to them. You know, it's it's just it's crazy to think that the Celtics. Uh, what was it? They played. Um, they played Milwaukee the day before the trade deadline. They lost, and then they played Milwaukee after the trade deadline. <laughs> came out won. and spanked them. <laughs> I mean, it's it's hit or miss with this team, and it's. I I think I've said it for about two, maybe three straight weeks. It is a tough team to back. Absolute tough team to back. Now, I'm looking at ESPN right now. Boston has a 77.5% chance of beating the Houston Rockets, where (laughs) I'm going to go ahead and say they have a 0% (laughs) chance. Hey, hey, and that's not far off. That's not uh, far off, man. And they just lost. They they're down. They're two in a row. You know they lost to Dallas. They lost to uh, the Pelicans. I mean, I mean losing that at home with fans in the stadium. That's just. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're spending upwards of, you know, two three hundred dollars a ticket right now. You know, would would you spend that kind of money to go and see the Celtics team right now? Uh, so I have a little. Uh... <laughs> Oh god. Oh god. You went? You went? No, no, no. Oh. I was going to go to the Dallas game and I saw the tickets. It said 
$450 for two tickets. And I thought about it because I was like, okay, you know, I want to see Luca. But then I was like, the Celtics are going to make me spend $400 and they can't even beat the Pelicans. So, and, and, and I feel for the fans. You know, I know why, because both games, the Pelicans and Dallas, they've been down big in the mm. first half. And then they want to come back, you know, by 25 points and still lose. I just with this with this game here in particular, this is a trap game. Uh, because again, man, if this is the Houston Rockets we're talking about, Boston, you you've guys called a, you've called a lot of trap games, and you've been <laughs> on point with the trap game. And and if until so if we remember, they played Houston uh probably like a month or two ago. The first quarter, it seemed like the Rockets was about to blow them out by like 20. So again, man, this Rockets team is is depleted. Depleted. You got Kelly Olynyk and Avery Bradley playing for them right now. You know, it's like Boston. If you lose this game, and I, I, I forget what team I said before. I think it was a few weeks ago. I said if the Celtics lose against this team, I would, I would be done with them. It was the Rockets. It was. Uh, was no, it, it was the Rockets, right? It was the Rockets. It was that Sunday game. I remember that. So hey, now <laughs> we're back. Hey, Boston. Literally, I, I swear. Uh, if you lose against this team again, I will not mention you guys at all on the podcast anymore because bye bye. <laughs> and and some of our if, if our viewers and listeners, if you're Celtics fans, you probably understand this. Every time the Celtics game is, is you find out the Celtics are playing. For me, I always say, all right, I'm gonna give them a second chance. And they lose. Then the next time they play, oh, I'm gonna give them a second chance. I'm tired of giving them second chances. I'm tired of giving third, fourth, fifth. I got I got I got Boston winning this game, but honestly, I won't be surprised if they lose because they <laughs> they they uh they don't they I don't know, man. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown not really clicking. I think they like each other, I think they respect each other, but I just think they're just not feeding off each other the right way. Marcus uh, Smart is Marcus Smart, he hustles, but does he shoot a lot? I get it, but then he's got to put him down. He's got to put him down. <laughs> to make him fall. I mean, looking right, you know, Semi's out, Tristan's out, and then you hop over the Rockets. You know, down there. What's his name? Uh, uh, I believe it's Semi Ogele. And who else? Uh, Tristan Thompson. They they play for us. I think so. Uh, are they with Maine right now? Oh, I never heard of them. I don't know. I don't know, they're irrelevant oh, anyways. Yeah, whatever, yeah. Whatever. Anyways, Dante Axe and John Wall, they're, <laughs> they're both popping up on the injury report. <laughs> injury report. Honestly, you know, I don't see the Celtics team winning, to be honest with you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They're two in a row at home. Fans are going to be upset. Fans are going to be booing. Fans are going to be. I mean, they I, booed them last I, game. <laughs> I don't know if they can reach their beers to the court to throw it at them, <laughs> but I'm telling you right now, this Celtics team, I'm it's done trash. with them. I'm done with them. I'm done, 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 hey, done. Wait, is done, your done, heart done. telling you you're done with them, or is it your your mental telling you? It's Which every. One? It's my <laughs> whole entire body, soul, heart, brain. Uh, my Antoine Walker jersey behind my head. Yes, it's Antoine. It's not a Kemba jersey. Thank you. Oh, Kemba, um, Kemba, Kemba. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm done with this Celtics team. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure if the, if the Red Sox play tomorrow, I'm going to be watching the Red Sox over, <laughs> over the Celtics game. <laughs> It comes to the point where I I see the Celtics play. I'm like, do I really want to watch them play tonight? Do I really want to yeah. ruin my night? I don't like when my night's ruined, so I might not even watch them tomorrow because I just have a bad feeling about this. You know, I really do. I, and and again, if we and, and we talked about it a little bit with Ryan, uh, you know, Jason Tatum, man, we I get it. He's go, he's going through a lot of stuff with COVID again. Uh, I just and he's still dropping numbers. Yeah, well, he help Jalen Brown. I I don't know what's going on, bro. But Jalen Brown, man, just just really pick it up a little bit more. You you you're you're an important player for us. You're one of my favorite Celtics on, on this team. But 
Just really try to feed off of each other. Have a have an uncomfortable conversation with Jason Tatum. Y'all two needed. Y'all two are the leaders, the best players on the team. If you don't like something about what Jason Tatum is doing, Jalen Brown, express it to him. Your teammates, Jason Tatum, vice versa. If you don't uh, like something that Jalen Brown's doing on the court, have those conversations, man. Your teammates, teammates are not supposed to be buddy buddy best friends all the time. You know what I'm saying? The ultimate goal is to win a championship. There's no way Kimball Walk and Jason Tatum and Jayla Brown should be in the eighth seed right now. In the eighth seed. And they'll be playing in the playing tournament if the playoffs started today. <laughs> they'll be playing bingo on Wednesdays down, <laughs> down at local church very soon. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's it's just sad. You know, I, I mean, I as much as I want to back the Celtics, I can't. It, you know, there's no back on them. There's no reason to back them. I mean, they're they're not playing for much, and you know, it's just yeah, they made a trade at the deadline, but you know, is it really worth it? Was 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 Evan Fournier coming over here? His first his first game playing thirty minutes, dropping zero points. Is that? <laughs> well, that's the thing, you know. But the haircut here, you're gonna like this, Dan. The the Brad Stevens he I said the Brad Stevens because I don't consider him. I'm sorry, I because I don't I don't know. Little he's Bradley, not the coach. He's, he's not the coach right now, in my opinion. But start Evan Fournier. You have a guy that can score 20 points, and you don't start him. You start. I think you started Mo Wagner last game. Yeah. Like Brad Stevens, well, like you 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 traded away Daniel Tice. Mo Wagner cannot play the Daniel Tice numbers. That's not his game. He's, he's not a Daniel Tice. You don't have Tristan. You don't have Robert Williams that game. I mean, even though Robert Williams will come back uh, tomorrow, I just feel, man, you have a 20-point-per-game score. Why not play him? Maybe that's why Gordon Hayward didn't want to come back. Maybe yeah, that's let, why. Let, let me stop you there. Go they ahead. do have Luke Cornett. <laughs> he can shoot. I know. He, he can shoot. <laughs> You the, shoot. the lesser, the lesser known of <laughs> that whole entire trade, the lesser known out of everything that the Celtics did before the trade deadline, he came out and he put up more points than Evan Fournier. And he's seven two. He could block shots. He's just slow. He, you know, he doesn't. He can't come off the switches uh, quicker. But again, I would have started him then Mo Wagner. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Going against Porzingis. Um, I just feel, and again, I think I tweeted this. I understand as a coach, I know what Brad Stevens is going through, but at the same time, you gotta, you gotta either get really in them, get in your, your guys' butt. And again, I saw his post post game interview. He was really pissed off. And that's what I want to see. I want to see an angry Brad Stevens, but I, I just, I don't get it, man. I don't Yeah, but it. an angry Brad Stevens is a... <laughs> Gee, guys, I think we need to hit the, hit the practice gym a little bit harder. Um, let's 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 go ahead and run some uh, some five on fives. Maybe we can go ahead and do some suicides. Uh, I mean, if you guys are up to it, you can come over to my house for your spaghetti supper later. Yeah. Like, like he needs he needs to put his foot down. I mean, he needs to put his size five foot down. And he needs to actually just like. He, I, I gave him the end of the year. I gave him next year. At this point, I'm done with him. I'm done with him. I'm done with Dave. <laughs> you know, somehow, some way, get Wick Rose back out of here. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. That's it. I'm the Celtics the rest of the season. They're they're on they're on my crap list. So, <laughs> that being said, I am done. You're done. You're done, done with, with the Celtics. <laughs> this is the last time you'll ever see a Celtics jersey behind my head, ever. And that's why it's behind my head because I'm embarrassed to show. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So yeah, so yeah, we, I got I got the Celtics winning by a thread uh, against the Rockets. Uh, and if you, even if they blow them out, I'm like, this is what you're supposed to do against the Rockets. But I'm, I won't be impressed with them being the Rockets at all. I mean, I I think I think I think they should win, but like I just said, I'm done with them. I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, first game off the bat, we're head to head here. So let's yeah. let's, let's see. I can't wait to text you tomorrow and just <laughs> what I tell you. <laughs> and, and please, if they lose, 
I need you to do another impersonation <laughs> of what Brad Stevens. <laughs> Little Bradley. <laughs> Well, of course, I don't want to go back to Indiana. Come on. Don't send me back down to college. Oh, man. Hey, it's one thing the Celtics, what they have done to us as fans is, man, we have a lot of jokes for you guys for the Celtics. Man, we had a lot of jokes for the Celtics. Every every radio show you hear, a Boston radio show, they just laughing at this season. This season. It's terrible. I mean, <laughs> I, I've, I've said it from the beginning. You have a shortened season. Yeah, yeah, these rookies didn't have a summer camp. Yeah, they they just came from the bubble, and they're expected to not have any preseason, you know, actual workouts. But look at my man Peyton Pritchard. I dropped him in there. Thank God I dropped him. I was just going to say that, Dan. Maybe you, Brad needs to think about what your theory is. Kim, I, and, I, and I think I, I think I tweeted this. No, I, no, I didn't. I said Kim, uh, Kimba. I, I, Kimba should humble himself. We, I love Kimba Walker. But humble yourself and maybe tell the coach, all right, listen, let's switch it up. I'm a, I'm a score first uh, guard. Maybe it's best for me to come off the bench. You know what I'm saying? Bring some spark off the bench. Have Peyton, who's a all-around point guard, a defender, um, a, a, a pass first, uh, makes the right decisions. Maybe have Peyton start and see what happens. Because if you think about it, Peyton Pritchard is not scared of the moment. He, he if you notice, when he gets the ball, he he's releasing that. You know, and then half the time it goes in. You know what I'm saying? When Kemba shoots, I'm like, oh, he's about to miss. Oh, he's gonna miss again. <laughs> no, I don't really think any smaller. He and I get it. Kemba should have never come back. He should have never. He should have just <sighs> sat this season out. You know, I don't care whether he's you know playing just to get paid, you know, his full contract or whatever it is. You know, you should have just bit the bullet and just said, nope, because back to back nights, you're only playing one game. You know, yeah. that, and that's 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 kind of what it's like, you know, with with Kemba on these back to back nights, you're pretty much running different styled offenses and defenses and you're changing your 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 style up every, you know, every back, at least every back to back. Right. <clears throat> and that's what I don't like. And that's one of the reasons why I'm done with the with the Celtics. You know, at this point in the season, yeah, you're you're in what, eighth place. OK. <laughs> Kemba should just sit out, come off the bench, like you just said, and let Peyton start. <clears throat> He's a better player than Kemba at this point. You know, I think I think Kemba's knees. Uh, I, I think it's acting up or something. Yeah, he's but, just he's, he's just not the right. He's not the the Kemba from even the beginning of the season of last year. And uh, you know, I really want Kemba to be successful in this league. He's one of the best players in the league, but uh, he's just not. He's not he's not it right now. Um, but again, maybe that theory can work. Maybe he can come off the bench. And if it's not start Peyton, maybe start Fournier, uh, Evan Fournier over Kemba and have Marcus Smart, Evan Fournier, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and uh uh whoever you're sending, Robert Williams, you know what I mean? And then have Peyton Pritchard and Kemba come off the bench. That's extra scoring and mixture of defense. I I feel like me and you should just go to the front office and <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, let's let's get uh let's get B bleeds green on here. <laughs> yes, on. yes, yes. Right, we'll yeah. be getting him on here next week. Yes, for and, sure. You know, we'll we'll discuss the Celtics team. But while we're while we're on the topic of the Celtics, you want to talk about the Celtics Hornets game? Yeah. This this game here, man, is uh is going to be an exciting one. Uh, um, as as we all know, uh, two Celtics are coming back. Uh. Got get uh get Gordon Hayward and uh Terry Rozier playing for the Hornets and um I love watching this Hornets team they're very excited even though they got thrashed on tonight <laughs> against Brooklyn uh, uh but again that's who they are they're 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 trying to find their consistent um uh, consistency uh but they just you know they have good nights they don't you know and again it's just, they have better nights than the Celtics, <laughs> you yeah, know. But, I mean, I'm looking at this Nets, the the the, the Nets uh, Hornets game, and Lamelo didn't play. Yeah, he's hurt. He's out yeah. for the season. Yeah, but 
I'm not. Uh, is he completely out for the season? Completely, one hundred percent. Well, they said they said four to six weeks, and then they'll they'll relook at his uh, his wrist. And again, if they make the playoffs, Lamelo's coming back. Oh yeah. And again, oh, if there were fans, again, well, maybe they will be down the road. But like, man, this Hornets team, man, will be a very tough outing in the first round, be- due to the fact that Lamelo changes the game when he's involved and. Uh, Gordon Hayward's looking like uh, Utah Gordon Hayward. Um, every night I see him play, he's at, he's has 30, 11, and 5 assists. It's like, wow, that's incredible. And that and that just makes the Celtics look bad because what did Brad Stevens not do by not using Gordon Hayward? You know what I'm saying? Did you a, lo- I, I think Gordon was – he had it in the back of his mind, you know, ever since yeah. the first – the first, uh, what was it, minute and a half of being a Celtic, he snapped Ooh. his ankle in a thousand different pieces. Jesus. Yeah, that was tough. I mean, I just think he had that in the back of his head, even when he got injured last year uh, in the bubble. You know? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But when he did play, he was he was putting up good numbers. But yeah, I, I just think that he, you know, he should have, I don't know, he should have never came back to the bubble. Yeah, and you know he's going to want to come back and perform at an all-time level, Um, especially Terry Rozier. uh, You know, he has some type of vendetta against the Celtics as well for not signing him and um, trusting him. And uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is Brad Watermaker on this team too? I believe he is. Yeah, Brad Watermaker is on the Hornets too off of the trade um, that the the, him and the Warriors did, uh, the Hornets and Warriors did. So, again, you got three guys coming (laughs) coming back that play for the Celtics, man, that have something to prove. Um, You know, this is going to be an exciting game. I just think that with the the Celtics hopefully beating the Houston Rockets, um, that gives them a little confidence. (laughs) <laughs> coming into the, coming into this uh, Hornets game because this is this is going to be an exciting game. Uh, I, um, I don't know if it's going to be ESPN or something like that, but even though even either, either way, you know this is going to be a big game. Um, I got I got the Celtics winning uh, close game. Um, I think Gordon Hayward is going to dominate us because I don't think no one on this team can guard him. Um, Terry Rozier is going to eh, you know Terry Rozier okay. You know, uh, but then they, they got they got Devonte Graham, they got the Malik Monk, uh, they got a lot of uh, guys on this team that could really play uh, the game. And, and uh, all I want to see is you know fans on the stands wearing their scary Terry shirts. Oh you know? my gosh, that's gonna be, <laughs> and it's on Easter. I might want to go to that game. I might see if I can go to that game. But yeah, that's a that's 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 a that's a tough. Uh, this is gonna be a, t- a tough game for the Celtics, but I think they're gonna they're gonna end up winning this game uh, again uh, by a landslide as well, just like the Houston game. But you know, it seems like you don't got them. You don't well, got them. The Celtics are on a two game losing streak. It will extend well past Sunday. So, I mean, <laughs> Hornets are gonna win. I'm sorry. Oh, wow. Hornets are gonna win. <laughs> there's just, I mean, there's there's just too much going on with the Celtics team. It is. And they're just they're not clicking. It's they they need a veteran presence in there. And Marcus Smart is not the answer. He's not. Why didn't they trade him? Why? Because they thought they they could get they thought they could get more. I think they were going to trade him to Miami, right? He was going to be part of that piece for um or not Miami, Orlando. Orlando, yeah. And they were trying to get uh Vucevic. Yeah. And then I, but I just that's where Danny Ainge comes into uh, the factor too. What did what should the Celtics do with him? I mean, are they still are we still relying on him winning uh, a championship with uh, KG Pierce and Ray Allen? And that year, no team can mess with them <laughs> that year. You know what I mean? So what have we, what have you done for me lately? You know, uh, gotten us to three consecutive Eastern Conference Finals. Um, should we have traded Isaiah? Maybe we should have trusted his hip and treated him right. You know what I'm saying? Maybe we would have been in a better predicament, you know, with that group, because that old Celtics team was tough. They had grit, they had heart, you know, they, they, they played well. Um, and then we switch over to Kyrie Irving phase, which was, you know, great for us because Kyrie Irving was a transitional player. He just, you know, he, he was going through personal stuff, you know, which happens, but then we switch over to the Kimber phase, you know, Kimber's a smaller guard, but he's a good leader, but, 
Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are growing to themselves. Uh, it's just, I don't know. It's a weird phase that the Celtics going through. And again, believe it or not, man, I think we just, you know, I think the Celtics need to go through this, you know, and they need to, cause all teams go through certain adversity like this and some type of adversity like this. So I think it's good for the, for Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, because, you know, I'm looking forward to next season. I'm looking forward to off season to see what the Celtics do, because if the Celtics don't do anything this off season, then we're, we'll probably be, you know, back where we was before Ray Allen, KG <laughs> and, uh, and Paul Pierce teamed up where they won 16 games because, Man, Jalen Brown, and Jason Tatum need help for sure. They definitely do, and they're 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 not getting it. And I I think this late in the season, they they need to start working on uh, utilizing what time they have left, the players that they have right now, mm -hmm. and um, and just I mean, pretty much, you know, that's that's all they they need to do. They need to start utilizing the the players they have now, and just finish the season out as just a practice season. Cause I mean, yeah. let's be honest, you're not going to win a championship. No. And you know, it's, it's maybe tank for the rest of the season. Maybe just play your, your younger guys, rest Jason Tatum, Jalen. Cause if they if, say if they go on an eight game losing streak, it's like, where do you, what type of ground do you, you're not covering anything. So you might as well just call it, call it a day and rest, uh, play the young guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. They need to. Oh, guys. But, I don't know. I'm done with the Celtics team. Yeah. They're losing. They're losing tomorrow. Well, I almost said tonight because <laughs> usually we, we we do these. We go well into midnight. So <laughs> yeah. So usually, yeah. yeah. They're, they're losing Friday. They're losing Sunday. Uh, <laughs> should I should I go further deeper into their schedule? Um, <laughs> let's see. Oh, oh man, Dan is serious. He really done with this team here. Yeah. I'm, you don't really go deep into the, the um, next exhausted. week. They're losing to the 76ers on Tuesday. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're going to lose to the Knicks on that following Wednesday. They're going to lose to the Timberwolves, the Nuggets, <laughs> Trailblazers. Oh. They're going to lose to LeBronless <laughs> Lakers. Okay. They're going to lose to Golden State. They're going to lose to the Bulls. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, they might lose that game, too. No, they're going to. I'm, yeah. this, like, I, let's see. They have, I don't know, what, 20 games left? Yeah, something games. like that. Yeah. yeah, we're lucky if we catch them winning at least five of those games. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I'm to just mark my words right now. They're gonna yeah. win maybe five of those games. Oof. I mean, I even said it, you know, after the All Star break, you know, the second half of the season, it's gonna be a tough schedule for the Celtics. Oh yeah, and mm -hmm. it's showing. I mean, it's showing. But yeah. if you think about it, it, should have been easy because these teams that they're losing to is just they're they're under five hundred teams that they're losing to. Uh, even with last night, I mean, it's only Luca, and then Jalen Brunson went off, but like he always goes off against us. But I just don't get where they're they're down twenty five points, and then they want to hustle their way back up. Now again, that's coaching. If you can't get your guys to have focus, uh, that that type of focus level in the beginning of the game, they're not listening to you. If you're doing it two consecutive games in a row, they're not listening to you, Brad. There's only, not listening there's always to so much you can rely on Jason Tatum with. Yeah, you know what I mean? And he's tired. I feel bad. He's giving it his all. But, you know, and then Jalen Brown's probably hurt with his knees, you know. So, I don't know, man. Well, hopefully your theory's wrong because, again, I am a Celtics <laughs> fan at, at heart. But, you know, like, let's go. Let's, let's Celtics. Let's prove Dan wrong, man. Let's hey, get this going. You, Come on. You wanna, you let's go, go, Celtics fans. Come on. Let's go. You want to go to Orlando? You want to go to Orlando? <laughs> let's book a let's book a trip to Orlando right now. I'm looking on e I'm looking on ESPN. Wednesday, May fifth, Celtics <laughs> at Orlando. Tickets as low as twenty seven dollars. Oh man! It'd be cheaper, it'd be cheaper to catch a flight down like, there yeah. and, even, and even leave the same day <laughs> than it is to catch a game at the Garden right now. <laughs> oh my God! Incredible, man! Incredible. Uh, all right. Anyway, we got. I'm done with the Celtics. I'm done yeah. with the Celtics talk until next week. Until next when, week, when when they lose, you know, four more, <laughs> then we'll we'll be on the Bradley Bash and train again. So. <laughs> let's uh, let's let's hop back into Friday night. We got the Bucks Trailblazers. Oh yes, yes, and uh, 
this is a, a game that's going to be really good because you know the Blazers surprisingly they're they're playing they're playing excellent ball due to their offense their defense is horrible uh um I think it's actually making the history books uh, for the for this team to be I believe they're 29 and 18 I think they're fourth in the west to have that type I forget their numbers now I don't have it with me but their defensive numbers is uh, is, is historically bad uh but offensively is one of the top uh offensive teams in the league with uh Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum's back and healthy. My guy Carmelo Anthony is playing um like the Hall of Famer he is. Um a couple of trades they made was great. Uh, having um Norman Powell come from the Raptors, uh he's bringing that spark um off the bench. So again, this Blazers team is is one of my favorite teams in the West due to the fact that I want Damon Damian Lillard to at least get back to the Western Conference Finals because I don't I don't see them getting to the NBA finals due to the Lakers. Um but again man I just I just really like this group uh, uh with the Blazers uh the Bucks uh they're they've been they're still finding their way still they're a little bit inconsistent. You know they tend to win two then lose one then lose another one. Um, you know, they won, they beat the, uh, LeBron AD less, uh, Lakers last night. So can't really count that game, even though they struggled a little bit with Drummond. He got hurt, uh, in the first, you know, he only played like a few minutes, but you know, the Bucks team there, you know, I, I think they're just ready for the playoffs. I think they really are. And, uh, but I got the Blazers winning because I, no one on this team, on this, uh, Bucks team, other than Drew Holiday, who can guard Damon Lillard, uh, can, can stop this Blazers offense because, uh, man, they're just historically they're playing really good basketball on the, on that offensive side, you know? Hey, you know, good pickup. They picked up uh, Jeff Teague. Oh, yeah, the bucket, <laughs> which is crazy, right? <laughs> and who did Jeff yeah, Teague play let's for? Trade, let's trade Jeff Teague. Knowing, knowing for a fact that, you know, oh. Orlando's going to drop him. They're, they're, they're going to just buy him out, and he's going to be a free agent. And what happens? You know, you said you want to see some of these guys <laughs> go, go to the Eastern Conference and just completely dump on us. Or, he was yeah. playing good. Jeff Teague was playing great basketball for the Celtics. Trade, I'd rather have trade them trade Marcus Smart than the Jeff Teague. And we get a lot. We we uh, believe it or not, we get a lot for Marcus Smart. We will. I don't know. I, just, <sighs> I can't even. I can't even. I know. I know. I know. I know. We gotta go through this. We gotta go through this with the Celtics. But uh, you know, and now I'm proud that Jeff T's going to a contender uh, and a coach that the Bucks respect and, and an organization that uh really wants him to to play. And I bet you Jeff T is going to play like the old Jeff T um, mm -hmm. a couple years ago because Jeff T wasn't being used the proper way um, in Boston because Brad Stevens couldn't figure out a way to put Jeff T uh, in better situations. You you can't you can't DMP him for five games in a row yeah. and a veteran, a proven veteran that has been in those moments. And Jeff T has said uh, publicly that he, it, he he was like what eight months without touching the ball, playing basketball. So, of course, with his age, it's going to take him time to just get back in the rhythm. And then he was getting back in the rhythm, and then you trade him. It's like I, I, I don't I don't understand. But, again, Jeff T., you deserve this. And I hope next time you play against the Celtics, you drop 40 points and you look at Brad Stevens and you look at uh, uh, Danny Age and say, eat them noodles. Eat them noodles, yeah. Because I know Jeff T. respects the, the Celtics players, but it's just – the the organization itself, you know, is they're acting up right now. But you know, I got I got the Blazers beating the Bucks. Uh, um, I I don't know if it's in Portland, uh, even though crowds don't matter. But you know, is it in Portland? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's in Portland. Uh, Damian Lillard is just um, he's one of my favorite players in the league. So you know, I got I got the Bucks winning this one. I mean, I'm sorry, I got the Blazers winning this one. I mean, I'm with you on that. You know, I I, I see. Uh, you know, Milwaukee's they're they're just they lost to just three crappy teams, and then they you know they the pity wins. I call yeah. I'm gonna call them the pity wins. Yeah, they their last five they beat Boston, lost to Boston, lost to the uh Knicks, lost to the Clippers, mm -hmm. and then yeah, they beat like you just said, the the LeBronless Lakers. They're just pity wins at that point, and yeah. they they can't keep up right now. 
And I, I mean, especially with this Trailblazers team, I, I see Dame going hard. Uh, yeah. Even, even in his canter, another Celtic who <laughs> saw what three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> he's a great offensive yeah. rebounder. He can score yeah. in the post, and he's a great team, uh, a team guy. He would have been perfect with this group. Mm-hmm. Ah, but I mean, I, he's, he's meshing well, you know. And they, they, they got mellow out there. The, the, the actual mellow, Carmelo. Okay, Carmelo. and and just Norman Powell, C.J. McCollum, and you got Dame time. You know, Robert Dame. Robert Covington. Dame this Dame. team is is just well put together, and I think that. They're gonna give the Bucks a run for their money, and the Bucks are the Bucks are favored in this game right now. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. I don't know. There's got to be something out there that that I, I don't know. Is she honest? Is she honest? Of it's course, it's honest. But it's I mean, there's there's no way that this team should be favored. Yeah. You know? Especially against this this healthy yeah. Trailblazers team. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'm going Trailblazers. I'm riding with you this time. I'm yeah. not. I'm not. I'm not fading you. But, <laughs> you know, but you you picked the two. <laughs> you, pick, you picked the two Celtics games. So of course, I'm against you on that. <laughs> I can't. I can't back the Celtics. I can't. Nah, they just they, again. Uh, they're just you know they're breaking my heart on just their effort. And it's at not, this point, it's just beating a dead horse at this point. Yeah, for sure. And again, man, I'm hoping for the best. I hopefully let's go. Let's get this restart. You know, let's have this little scrimmage against Houston. It should be a practice scrimmage. Hopefully, yeah, uh, right. <laughs> watch Kelly Olynyk drop forty five on us tomorrow. Um, Stupid gump. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, we'll we'll see how this goes, man. But you know, um, again, this NBA season has just been so awkward and weird and you know unwatchable at this point yeah you just know who's gonna win uh who's gonna get to the finals and it's clearly the nets well i think who did who i i i have to go back and i think it was i think it was one episode before the all-star break or or two episodes before the all-star break we we both dropped our teams that are gonna Make the finals. Teams oh, yeah. are going to make each conference final. I I need to bring that back up because I I, I want to get into a little discussion about that. We'll 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 get into a discussion with that next week, mm-hmm. um, and see how things have changed in our eyes. Uh, but yeah, that's. I mean, it's the 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 product that the NBA is pushing out right now. Yeah, we're LeBronless, but I mean, one person shouldn't make the whole entire yeah. league unwatchable. But right. I don't know. It's just I mean, there's a lot of college basketball going on. So that's there's that's where my focus conference. has been going on. Yeah. And with that being said, you know, we have we have two games going Saturday, final four. And we have the championship game Monday. Monday. <sighs> Who you got? I, Who you got? I mean, I said you see, I, I I think I texted you. I said UCLA is going to beat Michigan because oh. the Big Ten, the Big Ten is fake, and I think you laughed in my face. I did laugh and, at your face, bro. Yeah, they UCLA ended up winning what two points, oh. three points, two points. <laughs> They're not going to be able to compete with Gonzaga. This is going back on everything I've ever said <laughs> about this tournament and how Gonzaga is going to get knocked out. Nope. This, I mean, you're a number one going against a number eleven, <laughs> a number eleven who barely put up. What, what was the final score of that game? It was, it was fifty two, or, or fifty one forty nine, or some some crazy. Yeah, like, small number. number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonzaga's gonna put up at least a hundred by themselves, <laughs> easily. Do you see the, you see that how they step on the court? I believe what was it? The last time they've been down, they haven't been down any by any p- amount of points in the past like I don't know eight weeks or something like that. <laughs> something crazy. I don't know, man. They're thirty and zero, uh, which is incredible to me. Uh, Gonzaga, man, that you just tell when they step on the court, they just know what they just know. By the end of the first half, they already up by like 12, 35. You know what I mean? And then the rest is just, you know, keep keep their foot on the gas and just keep going and going and going. And you know, when that buzzer ends, you know, they're they're victorious. 
But you know what's funny? Not in the pool that we're running. By the way, if you are in our pool on ESPN, please email us. Yes. Email us. Uh, erase the chalk pod at gmail.com. Send us your username and we're going to get a little information about you. Uh, we're going to, we're going to send some stuff out. <clears throat> Let's go. Um, but if, if you are in that pool and I think uh, I'm, I'm no longer beating Charles. So I, I, at this point, I don't think I can get any more points. Um uh, I have to just admit my defeat. <laughs> In one of my other pools, I did have Houston winning the whole entire thing. Mm. And I think I actually had I think I had this matchup, Houston Baylor in one of my other in one of my other brackets, but mm. I, I just I had to change it up for ours to be a little different. Maybe yeah. uh, of course that completely crap to better for me. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I was in first for about <laughs> For, for quite some time, and I was starting to toot my own horn. Yeah, I got, yeah. I got my I got my duck hat ready for Charles. I'm so Blair. glad I'm not wearing that. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad. Now, I'm not that. if I swear, if I have to say LeBron James or Duncan even wear Robinson. a Duncan Robinson jersey, I'm probably going to <laughs> uh, probably cry. Won't, won't you just say it one time, real quick? Because <clears throat> it might be happening. LeBron James is the greatest basketball player. Was that what it was? No. What was it? Yeah. LeBron. No. No. What was I it? I love LeBron James. No, or LeBron James, James is the is the greatest basketball player. Charles, <laughs> LeBron James is great. I can't even yeah. say it. <laughs> Charles, LeBron James <laughs> is the best basketball player. There you go. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Do it. There you go. There you go. And just envision yourself wearing a Duncan Robinson jersey as well while saying that. Hey, LeBron played for Miami. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Cleveland, Miami, LA. Where's he going next? Yeah, I know. He's going he's gonna to come play for the Red Sox. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> so, who you got? Who you got? You got Houston, Baylor. Who you got? Oh, I got, I got, I got Baylor winning this, uh, this one uh, for sure. Uh, I got for the for the championship game. I got Gonzaga versus Baylor. So, you know, That's since my Wolverines is done, uh, you know, I got Gonzaga. Now, Gonzaga was my 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 my, my uh, first original pick, but then I had, you know, I loved the way the Wolverines was playing. But you know, fraudulent was- Big Ten team. <laughs> yeah. So I Gonzaga. Mean, I had Houston. <clears throat> But just looking at Houston and the way that they are that their game has, you know, kind of regressed, it's it's not I mean, they're not putting up numbers like Baylor. No. Baylor, it's gonna be Baylor <clears throat> Gonzaga. Like yeah. I just said, Gonzaga's gonna put up a hundred on their <laughs> uh, Drew Timmy's probably gonna put up, you know, I don't know, some ins- insane, you know, sixty burger. Yeah. So UCLA has nobody to cover any of these guys and but, they just need to they need I think it was <clears throat> Gonzaga and USC. USC wasn't playing defense. I think they went they they were bouncing back from a man to a zone and Gonzaga just kept putting up threes. So all they kept doing was putting up threes, putting up threes, putting up threes and they started bouncing back and forth. The USC started bouncing back and forth between those two zones and, you know, going man to man. It was, it was just, it's, I think Gonzaga. It's, it's, it's just written for them to win. It is, man. And that, and again, I'm not trying to sleep on UCLA because the, I, I believe the uh, Wolverines was favored that game. Oh my, so, by a lot, <laughs> by a lot, you know. So I think it was, no, I think it was seven. I think there were seven point favorites, six point favorites. Yeah. <laughs> But I think uh, Michigan beat them up a little bit. They roughed them up a little bit defensively because, again, Michigan plays defense, and I think they exerted a lot of energy off that game. Even though they had a, you know, they had a few days off after that, but I just feel like, man, this Gonzaga, 
Gonzaga is just is a different ball game, man. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta maybe get extra sleep than that that night before. You gotta do extra stuff to get ready because this is for the championship. This is to go to the championship game. And Gonzaga now, Gonzaga could just come up, come to this game and just be like, ah, nonchalant and just <laughs> you know wet the bed. But you know, I just don't see Gonzaga doing that. I think they smell blood. I, they smell blood for sure. They they definitely do. I mean. Who's that kid from UCLA? Uh, Ty, uh, Tiger, John, Tiger Campbell, Tiger Campbell, and Johnny. Uh, what's his name? Johnny Juz, Juzang. That know. kid, that kid, Tiger Campbell. His hair is insane. I call him the Bob Marley. <laughs> he looks like Bob Marley, man. He, he looks big. like he looks like a uh, sideshow Bob from uh, <laughs> from The Simpsons or Krusty the Krab. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, no, Krusty, Krusty the Clown. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, that he's, that, he's that hair is crazy though. though. Yeah, yeah, he's a good point guard too. He was playing yes. very well that game. Oh, yeah. uh, he was definitely playing well that game. Uh, so I mean, this is gonna, it's gonna be it's gonna be an exciting game, I think. But I think Gonzaga is just gonna turn it up to a level where it's just gonna be over by like it, it remind me of, like you know how when the war KD and the Warriors all joined together mm-hmm. <laughs> by like halftime, it, it, the, the score is over with. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The game's over with. So Gonzaga. Um, they're my favorites to win it now. Uh, let's see if they can prove me right. Um, for sure, uh, I just I, I've said it and I've said it before Gonzaga's not gonna go on, they're not gonna go undefeated. Oh, they're man. not, they're not, they're not gonna go undefeated. So, you got so. Baylor beating them. Mm-hmm. Oof. That, I can't wait for Monday, I and you know, wait for Monday. You know, maybe we maybe we'll set up a watch party or something. Maybe. Let's do it. Let's do set it. A watch party. I don't know. I just feel like this for some strange reason. I mean, both of their heights match up, UCLA Gonzaga, but Gonzaga just seems like the bigger team. Yeah, yeah. You know? So it is going to be Gonzaga and Baylor. Mm-hmm. Baylor's going to come out on top. We'll I think only because they have that slight advantage of you know they get they get a couple hours of rest, a couple extra That's hours true. of rest. That's true. But Gonzaga's going to be resting this whole game, so exactly. they're not going. They're not going to sweat. They're, they're going to that, and that's going to be a downfall. That's going to be a major factor. Uh-huh. Even if they don't sweat, they're going to they're they're going to come out Monday looking like dog doo doo. <laughs> You just want them to, you just want that one loss to it's not, it's not gonna be like it's not gonna be like my ducks when they, they got that one to nothing win over VCU and then came out and dropped number two Iowa. No. <laughs> Gonzaga, Gonzaga's done. I'm sorry. Gonzaga's All right. Done. Let's go, Gonzaga. Right. <laughs> That's gonna do it for us. Yes. I'm gonna leave you on that note. Gonzaga's gonna lose. <laughs> Um, I'm going to unfortunately have to say those ugly words come out of my mouth uh, about uh, La Flop, La Prince, LeBron James, La Queen. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like I said, if you made a bracket, please email us erase the chalk pod at gmail.com. Yes. Um, and we'll just, we'll just keep the content coming. We got, I, I think we said 14, uh, 15, maybe 16 is going to be a good episode as well. Um, yeah. we, we got yeah. we got some we got some good uh, guests lined up, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, we'll, we'll keep it coming. But yes, sir. and shout out to Ryan Marcus for coming on again. Uh, thank you for blessing us on your on uh, on attending um, on the show. We appreciate you. It was a great interview. Um, and again, uh, again, it's always credit. Uh, we want to give credit to our followers, our listeners, our viewers. Uh, you guys are uh, important for us as well. So keep your eyes out on him next year. <clears throat> yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, uh, yeah. Well, uh, uh, man, oh, I'm getting Can't away from Monday. Can't wait for Monday. All right. We'll catch you guys next week. And right. uh, anything you guys want to hear. Listen, uh, tell us to subscribe, uh, subscribe, uh, subscribe, subscribe. We, our our YouTube subscribers are going up. Uh, we love that. We appreciate everybody that, that takes the time out of their night, out of their days to listen to us. Um, 
and just let's just keep the momentum. Let's let's keep it going from there. Get ready for 15. And if you're not ready for 15, get ready for 16 and yeah. so on and so forth. I'm Dan in the car. And I'm Charles. Let's get Catch it. Catch you guys next week. All right.